Thursday morning, I woke up to see a bunch of lively discussions already taking shape around this video. And now we're starting to experience, unfortunately, in freeze thaw, we see this water main breaks. I just got hit by a car, but I'm okay. I just got hit by a car, but I'm well, okay, Tim. That's the first um, I'm on okay. TV, Jory. Woo. Kathy, you saw the rant that I put on Facebook that started out with, why is she alone out there at night at 11 o'clock when they know the weather is bad? It's a, uh, the biggest well, safety Well, we know why that is. Be. It's money. Well, it is. <laughs> and, and that what we call the MMJ, the multimedia journalist model, is quite popular in television stations, especially at those in smaller markets. Um, MMJ has been the new term used in place of one man band. So somebody mm -hmm. might be able to envision that idea of the one man band, one person doing everything themselves. But that business model comes at a safety risk. A yeah. huge safety yeah. risk. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, it's you know when when you see something like, and that's what I knew. That's happened before, and it's probably going to happen today at a station somewhere in I the United States. I hope it doesn't. But you know, the the it goes back to what Kathy's talking about, which is you know when uh, I started out in college doing television, and when you went and when when the reporters went out, you had a cameraman with you. Well, now that the, the equipment itself has become more compact. They can send reporters out without a cameraman and they can set it up and everything and, and push a button while they're standing there and, 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 and then you're on the air and you're going and you're going live. But in situations like that yeah. or in a situation where you know it's, it's late at night, it, it, you're probably not in a very safe neighborhood, anything could happen. And it all revolves back to a one-man band, means you don't have to hire a camera. Well, so that was the first point that I made in this rant on Facebook. Right. The idea that she should not have been out there alone. There should have at least been a two-person crew. And I will tell you, the first two people who commented were former photographers who used to work with me when I was an assignment editor. And one of them said, yes, absolutely. The second one said, no, it needs to be a three-person crew. Hmm. This still would have happened, if it was a live shot, it should be a three-person crew. Because if I'm shooting, I am so focused on what's in my viewfinder while the reporter is focused on the anchor and being on the air. A two-person crew still finds themselves in this position. Um, further down in that thread, and the producer in me, because that is the side that I came up in in TV news. The person who is, you know, kind of making sure the show goes okay, deciding what's going in the show, is in contact with the uh, the reporter in the field in contact with the anchor on the set, and also the director, the person who's pushing the buttons and having the cameras. Why didn't the producer dump out of that? You just saw 50 seconds of that clip. It went on for two and a half minutes in what was posted on Twitter. Yes. And, and yeah. for the same, so my point with that is why didn't the producer say to the director, dump out, get to a commercial, take two and a half minutes, get in that reporter's earpiece, like the one that I wear, check up on her, get her off the set, get her off the scene, have everybody regroup. Yeah. No, Instead, right. they left her up there like that. And and if you need more time to regroup, go to weather. Weather can go on and talk forever, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, the audience at home isn't going to notice. You know, it was interesting. Uh, we talked about uh, this clip in one of the classes I was teaching. And uh, one of our students, uh, our students are really the best, uh, uh, brought up, I thought, a really interesting mm -hmm. point that there was something almost prurient about staying on that shot. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it it got so much traction as as the student said had they dumped as you said which they should have you should just say folks uh, we're going to check on the well-being of our reporter mm -hmm. here we'll be right. back um, and then do that um, but had they done that this thing wouldn't have had the viral life that it did okay, and so there's something a little sick about yeah, I was watching say, let's let's talk about the ethics of that for a second so the viral life that it did they brought her on the set again the next day to talk about it, to show everybody she was okay. At that point, they're kind of exploiting this situation. Yes. They're creating a viral video around themselves. And I don't know, that that has a pretty high ick factor. At least to me, it does. Exactly. Um, 
Another point that I want to bring up here, and this may be a little bit of the effect of how we all came up in the baby boomer generation, Gen X, like you want it bad enough, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna get it and mm -hmm. do whatever it mm -hmm. takes. Some of those early hot takes on what happened here, including from NAB, the National Association of Broadcasters, and RTDNA, the Radio Television Digital News Association, um, were very much encouraging her for bouncing right back, getting right up, and getting the job done. Yeah, that's old school. And, and that doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, I mean, it goes back to the days of, of and I, I, I'm guilty of it. You know, when people are leaving the hurricane zone, you're going in, as a journalist, you're going into the hurricane zone. And and so that sort of plays into that. Put yourself in danger to get the story sort of sort of mantra. And she, you know, was thinking, OK, I'm I'm far enough off the road. I can get this story and be okay when in fact she, but I'm close enough to actually be able to pan out and mm -hmm. see and, and describe what it is and visually show people what's going on. She wasn't. And so sometimes that whole idea of being close to the story so that you can really give the audience a, an idea and picture of what's going on means that you're going to find yourself in harm's way. And that's where that sort of mentality of, yes, you were there, you you did it. That's where a lot of that comes from. Well, so, and I thought yeah. you said something on your Facebook post, Amy, that was really uh, absolutely true. Yes, she bounced right back, but she was in shock. Yeah. Right. I mean, that, when that something like that happens. That was okay. No. Yeah, you're going to say you're okay because you think you are, but yeah. you don't know that you are. And yeah. and I'm so, surprised she was able to get back up and do it and didn't, didn't say anything that was off color. Exactly. No, that's <laughs> Probably the big, the big yeah. award, yeah, because yeah. well, so, that would not have been me. Yeah, right, <laughs> so as we talk about that being old school, because I mean that's why I brought it up is as boomers and as Gen X, like that is what we were taught and how we did come up. But we are right now at this point that has been coined the Great Resignation, and people are leaving jobs in journalism, especially in television news, at rates as high, maybe even higher than in other industries, because of some of these things we've been talking about, safety issues, or mental health issues, no, the challenges absolutely. that, this doesn't help that. Well, I mean, you can be proactive. I mean, and, and I think that's where we drop the ball uh, in, 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 most, in most instances mm -hmm. is be proactive. Why put why put your people in that kind of in that kind of situation? I mean, did you necessarily have to do that story live? You could have you could have done that story where she went out there, did all of the all of the the, the visual work early and on. And they probably did. And, right. And, you, and, and and this is where I think sometimes going live for the sake of live puts people in harm's way for no apparent reason. And, I, and, and, and you see that a lot in, in television, in particular in local television news, you see that a lot. And I, I for the life of me, can't understand why we do yeah. that. Yeah, well, the one thing I will say about this incident, and, and uh, just for people who don't know the whole story, uh, the reporter involved here, she said it was her last uh, week on the job, but she is going, she's staying in journalism, she's going to a bigger market. Um, but I, so I think uh, there's always going to be some of that, but I, I thought what was impressive is that as soon as this happened, people started to have the kind of conversations you initiated on your Facebook feed, Amy, and uh, certainly here, you know, I was getting messages, we need to talk about this in class. So I think, um, you know, let's hope that this uh, spark some conversations and you know NAB uh, the National Association of Broadcasters and particularly RTDNA are really terrific membership organizations and hopefully they will start to talk to their members about uh, and not just the reporters but the managers right. about the people all the issues that you raised on yeah, us yeah. like what what is reasonable and when do you just sort of say you know mm, no not worth it 